Welcome to Locked On Astros, your daily Astros podcast. Here are your hosts, Eric the Man Heisman and Brett H Town Wheelhouse Chancy. We are Locked On Houston Astros, and we hope that you join us for a daily Locked On Astros podcast. My name is Eric Heisman. You can find me on Twitter at Eric Talk Astros. Find the show at Locked On Astros, your team every day. Brett, where can they find you at? Well, they can find me at H Town Wheelhouse on Twitter and at Stros411 on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Always positive, always Stros. And listen, folks, we want you, the Locked On Astros Nation, to make us your first listen. And we want to thank you for those of y'all that do make Locked On Astros your first listen every day. We are free and available on all platforms. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Listen to us on audio wherever your smart device gets podcast. All right, so uh, NG Kirk says that it was basically a home run derby. That's what it was. Uh, it, it felt like a home run derby in the first couple of innings. Um, well, not the first couple of innings, but in the second and the third inning. So the Astros and the A's were basically just trading back uh, solo home runs. And that's basically what it was. And it was uh, like, oh, crap. Oh, yay. Oh, crap. Oh, yay. That's basically how it was. And then, uh, then you had the – I believe it was a sacrifice fly by – Tony Kemp that uh, drove another run home in the fifth inning. And then you had Kyle freaking Tucker get the uh, two run homer in the sixth inning. And then in the seventh inning, the Astros uh, took care of business, but then you had uh, the home run and you, you had everything that happened in the ninth inning, including Zach Greinke, who was in his third inning of a uh, relief appearance. Uh, a lot of people, I did a solo podcast earlier and some people were saying, well, maybe he left Dusty Baker. I mean, not Dusty Baker left Greinke in for too long. Maybe he should have just gone with two innings and then maybe bring in a, a, a another reliever or something. And then Blake Taylor gave up the uh, home run to, uh, give them the lead, but then you had you set up Yuli Gurriel, but something that we did talk about in the Spotify green room was this was Carlos Correa's day. This was something yeah. that a lot Astros fans will be talking about in case, in case I hate to talk about that, but in case this was well, the last time we see Carlos Correa in the lineup, uh, the Astros fans got a chance before the game because the Astros said, you know what? We're going to let Carlos Correa walk on the field by himself. He probably felt like, I don't know if they told him about that or he just kind of walked out there by himself and looked around like, wait, where's everybody? And then uh, then uh, the, the crowd was able to kind of give him a little bit of standing ovation. And then Dusty Baker was able to remove him. Now, if the game ended up going extra innings or something like that, I know this game meant nothing besides the fact Eric was right with his predictions of 95 wins. I just, <laughs> I just want to say that. But uh, but if this game went extra innings and the Astros eventually ended up losing because of the fact that Carlos Correa was not in the lineup, but I think Dusty Baker made the right move. No, yeah, definitely, um, and it's completely appropriate. And I'm gonna I'm gonna bring in a comment from Mr. Corona here in a second. Um, I was not at the game like you were, but I have seen the replays. And Carlos Correa's emotion was real. Um, I mean, to think that he was brought up in this organization as a number one overall draft pick, as a young kid, as um, one of the most promising prospects that baseball had ever seen, and for him to be with this organization his entire career, to go through the injury issues that he had for a couple seasons, to win the World Series, to proposing to his wife on the yeah, field yeah. after the World Series win, to becoming a father, and to becoming probably one of the most intimidating hitters in all of playoff baseball right now. That's right. Um, 56 at bat, 17 home runs. You can't deny the postseason effect that Carlos Correa has. You may want to mute your mic when you open the box. Um, and so Carlos Correa basically has, has manned up and has become the face of this franchise. And he has... Um, Hold on. All right. So he has he has really gone out of his way to take this team and put them on his back. And it has been excellent to see. And he means a lot to this city. He means a lot to a lot of fans. Um, people who may be first-time baseball fans know who Carlos Correa is. 
And something I noticed that Mr. Cronin noticed, I want to dovetail into this, is Tony Kemp at the end. I noticed at the celebration after Yuli did the walk-off, Tony Kemp was literally standing 10 feet away in between the pitcher's mound and shortstop on the grass, just watching the Houston Astros celebrate. And I thought the same thing, Mr. Corona. And Mr. Corona says, anyone saw Kemp stand on the field during the walk-off celebration? It screams to me that he really wished he was still here. And what former players say about this organization and what current players say about this organization, why wouldn't you want to be a part? Carlos Correa, I believe, wants to be a part. At the end of the day, it is a business. And sadly, money is going to talk. And there's not a single person on here that would say that they, if they got offered what Carlos Correa may get offered and the Astros don't match it, you can't tell me that you wouldn't take a massive contract and go somewhere else for that kind of money. It's very easy for me to say as a person who doesn't make millions of dollars that, Oh, he should stay. He should have something of a heart and he shouldn't care about the money. Well, it's, it's different when it's you and this isn't uncommon. It's not like if Carlos Correa left because of money, it would be the first. Um, And so I just think Carlos Correa, I still think there's more hope than not that he resigns. I, I just, I just have, I have, a, I have a feeling. And Springer, I knew he was gone, Eric. I knew, right. I knew Springer was gone. But Correa, I, I think he has more that ties him here. Correa didn't get burned by being having to be a minor leaguer for extra money. Daniela long is to from save money. this area. I mean, yeah. I'm not saying and Springer's no, wife was not from this area, but no, but that her being local, it, I mean, yeah, I mean. And if your wife says, I want you to stay and, but we got to get max money and this is what we're going to accept. And I mean, that's got to be a family discussion. So who knows? I think going forward, we hope that he stays. We remember the great things and we hope that this year they get a world series title. Yeah. I do believe, I don't remember what team they were playing, but I do believe that Tony Kemp actually did that before he stayed after a, and watched a, um, like an interview and he was actually in infield and watching some player being interviewed. And, uh, the national media made a big issue about this. What's Tony Kemp doing watching this celebration or this interview or something. And that's just the type of guy that Tony Kemp is. And so that speaks to how he cares about the other team and something or the other players. And uh, I, th- I do believe that he wishes he stayed, but the Astros made a decision. They had to make a choice at that time. And they, uh, Tony Kemp was expendable. They had other options. And so, yes, I'm, I know that Brian McTaggart made a, uh, a poll earlier today that said, which player has killed the Astros, former Astro has, um, killed the Astros more this year, Abraham Toro and Tony Kemp. I forgot who actually uh, won that poll, but I, I do want to say it was Abraham Toro. Uh, but uh, yeah, the, Tony Kemp is somebody the Astros wish he's, they have back. I believe he had a home run against uh, hit the Astros today, and he's had at least uh, some big hits this year. But um, what Carlos Correa, what – like he had that big home run today, the 26th of the season, what he represents to the Astros goes beyond his bat. It goes beyond his glove. You alluded to it earlier. What he does, what he means to his organization is he is the face to the franchise. I mean, we get, we all say that Altuve is the face to the franchise. Yes. To in a matter of speaking, he is, but what Carlos Correa did last year with uh, everything that happened with the Bay yeah. Bane trash can, who uh, it wasn't Altuve who came out. It was Carlos Correa who came out and said, "Yeah, we cheated, but homeboy Altuve he did not. He was the yeah, one who he... came out and said, "No, stop it. I do not want to use this freaking trash can scheme. Stop it. Stop it. Y'all can yeah, do it." Yeah, he he came out, backed his guys, said, told basically told Cody Bellinger, you know, to shut the f up. I mean, he he put the team on his back and. He came out this year with the eye of a tiger, with the heart of a champion, and healthy as he's ever been. The healthiest he's been all season, Eric. Done it with his glove, with his bat. And even when he was in a low a little bit, he still came back. It came back around. And the great thing I think that this team has going into this playoff season is they have experience. And yeah. we talked about this when we were in Spotify Green Room earlier. They have more playoff experience than any other club. There's no reason for me to think that they aren't the favorites each time they face someone, even if it's the number one seed, the Rays. 
Yeah. So by the way, you can't watch the playoffs if you don't have the right cable package or anything like that. So you better call direct TV. Tell us a little bit about that package. Yeah. So does it sound familiar? You got one device that lets you catch the game live another that lets you stream your favorite shows. You're watching sports highlights on your phone. You've got your neighbor's best friends log in for the good stuff. Well, I want to tell you about a simple way to get all your entertainment you love without the hassle and a great way to finally get your TV together. It's called direct TV stream. And it brings you live TV and on-demand favorites together like never before. So you can watch your favorite sports, movies, shows all in one place. That means no more juggling remotes and no need to buy another device ever again. The best part? There's no annual contract. That's right. So get rid of the clutter and the confusion and get your TV together with DirecTV Stream. You can learn more at DirecTV.com. That's DirecTV.com. Compatible device required. Content varies by package. All right. Speaking of content, uh, Mr. Krona, we are going to talk about that. And we have some upside to our content that we're going to bring out for the next couple of days. So speaking of upside, tell us about upside. Man, you're you're knocking these out like a American League batting champ. Hey, Astros fans, this is H-Town Wheelhouse with an incredible app. Everyone who buys gas needs to know about Get Upside. My listeners are making up to 25 cents. Every gallon of gas, every time they fill up, just download the free GetUpside app at the App Store or Google Play right now. Use a promo code BASEBALL and get a bonus $0.25 cents per gallon on your first fill up. That's up to $0.50 cents cash back. Don't pay full price at the pump anymore. Get cash back using GetUpside. Just download the app for free and use a promo code BASEBALL to get up to $0.50 cents gal- a gallon cash back on your first tank. Some people who drive a lot more and drive just like you are making as much as two to $300 a month in cash back. Who doesn't want that? There's no catch. The cash back gets you added right to gets added right to your account. You can cash out any time in your bank account, PayPal, e-gift card, Amazon, or other brands. Just download the free get upside app and use a promo code baseball. All right. Uh, so here's the yearly Guriel bobblehead. I love the, they even added the um, the pocket being out of the ball. I like it. Nice okay. touch. So the hair is um, kind of, um, I don't, it, I think the trolls have a little bit better hair, but um, <laughs> it's uh, it's okay. The face is decent. But um, so uh, Yuli Guriel was supposed to have the day off, but when Gur- when uh, Carlos Correa was lifted, they went ahead and put Guriel in that lineup. Then they moved um, Marvin Gonzalez to shortstop, I believe. And so they weren't expecting Guriel to get at a bat. And they're like, oh, crap. What if he gets at a bat? Then all of a sudden he gets a out or something. Then he loses his batting title. He had such a big lead. I didn't think there's any way he can lose that batting title. Uh, but he got a hit in a big situation. And he drove in Jason Castro. And so he finished uh, in first place and he won the American League uh, batting title. And uh, uh, this is just an awesome situation. Um, I believe he is the second. Uh, I, I want to say he was the second. I have it. I'm pulling up. I thought I had was, it up. But was second, he the second Cuban? Cuban, yeah. Because, because I would because I was wondering, I didn't know if he was the first or the second. Um, the second Cuban born player to win a batting title joining t- uh, the twins, Tony Oliva. Um, and he did it in 1964, 65, oh, wow. and 71. At so, 37 so years old, he is the second oldest first time batting uh, champion to do it. Guess who did it? I don't know. I have no idea. He, uh, he got some injections to help him win it. Barry yeah. Bonds. Uh-huh. Okay. Okay. Interesting. You see what All I did right. there? Yeah, I see what you did there. So, so here's the th- so here's the thing with Yuli. What I what I love about him is he has been consistent. And even if Eric he played today and went zero for four, Vlad Guerrero Jr. would have had to go six for six just to just to beat him. I mean, um, there was no way I think mathematically that he would have been caught. I think Brantley had to go four for five. And Yuli, I think I think Yuli had to go like one for four, and and um, Brentley would have to go four for five, and like I said, Vlad Guerrero would have gone six for six. So I, I think Yuli could have work. played. The math, yeah. didn't work. I think Dusty Baker was just trying to play it safe, but Yuli had it in the bag. But yeah, I he think did. Just That's what I'm saying. Baker. But 
it's great to have him. I think in the playoff, it's going to pay dividends. And today, Eric, in this game and all the all the fanfare with Correa, Zach Grinke coming in, um, Chaz McCormick, Jake Myers going yard today. You know, Siri is has got a fractured finger, so that kind of puts his playoff well, roster hopes in jeopardy. But if Myers and McCormick can get hot, Eric, those guys are going to be on the field every game. Yeah. And if those bats get hot, those are the young guns that you and I have talked about, the young guys tr- contributing and can be a huge help in beating the White Sox of Chicago. Right. Uh, so somebody mentioned that Guerrero, Guerrero could have played in another playoff, uh, like 163, uh, 63rd game. So th- that could have been a situation that Dusty Baker was probably taken in consideration. So maybe. But that wouldn't be a. Would that be. Would that, that be would have part been a of the regular season? season? Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. That okay, would have I been a regular so. season game. So that would have counted towards. We could have put an asterisk by it, though. No, that would have counted. So uh, somebody <laughs> asked, Mr. Cronus asked, uh, could Stubbs be on a postseason roster? I think that it's looking likely, especially with how good that Jason Castro is looking as a late inning, uh, late and close type of hitter, he, a, a, um, a pinch hitter. Yeah, you want him late in the game. We saw it again today in the ninth inning where he got that uh, pinch hitting, that pinch hit, and he uh, eventually came in to score that run. So, yeah, I, I think that especially if he, you're going to use him as a pinch hitter, you definitely want to have him as – you need uh, Garrett Stubbs. And so Garrett Stubbs, because of Castro's success, is definitely going to be on the roster. Now, the question is, how healthy is Siri? Is he, if uh, if he does have that fractured finger or, or, or whatever's going on with his finger, I haven't really checked to see uh, the update. But um, if he's uh, if he's able to pinch run, then he would just be solely a pinch runner type situation. So um, then, uh, so uh, Larry brings up a good situation. If he's going to be on the roster, then why haven't they played him? So that's a good Good question. Yeah, I don't. I don't think. I don't think Siri's going to be on the ALDS roster because of this injury. I just. Well, I, then, I mean. I mean, who's going to play then? I mean, if you have. What do you, what do you mean Jones? who's going to? What do you mean who's going to play? Yeah. they're going to. They're going to put Marlon Gonzalez on the on the roster. I guess it. I guess Marlon I mean, Gonzalez has made a team. Then you you have to. I mean, you're not going to put an injured player on the roster. That would be stupid. I, I mean, guess Martin Maldonado is going to play every inning, and I guess Jason Castro will. Wait, wait, why? So, so Stubbs can't be on the roster too. Well, uh, Larry said, "Well, if Stubbs can be on the roster, why haven't they played him?" And then he hasn't even played. I don't. I don't. Honestly, I don't think they're going to carry a third catcher. I really don't. I I just, I just don't see it. Um, And so, you know, basically, as of today, in the press notes. Siri has not been placed on the IL. He is still being evaluated. So they haven't even come out with anything yet. But um, count to 14, Brett. Thank you, Larry. Um, Actually, um, uh, he's actually, uh, Brett's about to do a, uh, a, um, you're about to do a show with one of the Locked On White Sox hosts. Yeah. Uh, Yeah. So that's why we're doing the show a little bit early today. So you're about to do it at nine o'clock. Yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to do a show with the uh, national group and, um, myself and one of their guys are going to come together. Um, we've got some guests coming on this week. We've got um, Ben Verlander. Um, you'll have to stay tuned for that this week. And we also have Mike Stanton and possibly some others coming this week. Big week for us pre-playoffs. Yeah. So we're definitely looking for that. Uh, some big guests. But yeah, the Astros finished um, with two players underneath uh, the age of 24 who hit 30 <clears throat> home runs. Uh, that is uh, Kyle Tucker and then uh, Jordan Alvarez. So that's uh, that's something to uh, look at the positive. I mean, the Astros have a lot of positives. I know Astros fans tend to look at the negatives, the bullpen, uh, some of Dusty's moves, but the Astros have a great team, and they um, the the team is healthy for the most. Uh, when's the last time you can look at the Astros roster and say, "Hey, everybody's healthy. Everybody's healthy except for Pedro Baez. Everybody is healthy right now." So or uh, Siri. <laughs> Okay, what happened to everybody? Uh, positive, <laughs> Brett. Come on. No, I'm just saying. Everybody was counting on him being on this roster. I mean, everybody put him on there. Um, I think that's unfortunate because you know the game he gets pulled out is the game he extended that hit. You know, got a triple, 
and sliding in, you know, like a, like an angry five-year-old into a, you know, into, I don't know, some, some amusement park. It was insane. Now he was, he is so fast. Yeah. He is so fast, dude. And I mean, he literally was stopped. The only way he stopped is because the third baseman was in his way. (laughs) He would have slid over that bag had that third baseman not been there. Pedro Baez. Who's that? Sam says. <laughs> I don't know. Some guy. He's some, some guy we token got the reliever the Astros <laughs> signed, and he pitched, what, four or five games. And uh, all we heard was his velocity is down from last year. So, um, and then he went down on the IL or something like that. So, uh, we got some more quotes from um, from Carlos Gray we'll talk about. But uh, Grinky, he pitched two and one thirds innings. He allowed two hits, two runs, zero walks, three strikeouts. But the key is he did this on short rest. He pitched on Thursday and now he pitched what? So that's one, two, uh, two days, three days later. So that's what Grinky has to adapt to doing. And he did this in a relief appearance in a big league game. That's a big th- step. So Grinky has, I believe this is 222 game uh, starts since the last time he made a relief appearance. Hmm. So that's kind of a big deal, guys. It's kind of like he was built to do this like a built bar. So talk about built bar. Yeah. So built bar is the best tasting bar, bar in the land. It is the, is a great tasting protein bar, hundred wrapped in hundred percent chocolate. It's healthy for you. If you're trying to watch your diet, it doesn't matter what your fla- favorite flavor is. You could dive into one of these built bars and you'll be satisfied with 17 to 18 grams of protein and calories ranging 130 to 180, only four to five grams of sugar and four to five grams of net carbs. All amazing flavors, all tasty, all healthy. You order today, you can get grasshopper cookie, you can get raspberry, whatever your heart desires. Built Bar is the official protein bar of the USA track and field team. Several Division One football teams and many, many locked on hosts. So check that out. I promise you, you won't go wrong. Built.com. When you do that, go use the promo code LOCKED15 and you'll get 15% off. That's the same discount we get as regular buyers. Get get 15% off with the promo code LOCKED15 at Built.com, the best bar in the biz. And we want to thank you for making Locked on Astros your first listen every day. We are free and available on all platforms. And we got a lot of people listening. I don't know if y'all listening from Twitter or from Facebook or wherever you're listening. Make sure you go subscribe to us. That's why we do some of these live feeds. And afterwards, we're going to go and delete those. So make sure you go ahead and go to um, to YouTube and go ahead, subscribe to us, give us a like. And um, we, we're going to go ahead and do this. We, we're going to try to do some live reaction like immediately after the game, then uh, go ahead and do some other shows throughout the playoffs. And we're going to be doing this uh, three times, four times a week during the off season. So uh, we are your, your daily podcast. So go subscribe to us on YouTube. And I don't know why my lighting's a little bit weird. I keep on getting dark and light tonight. But uh, you know what's awesome about tonight's game? We kind of getting uh, some a very a, a bit clearer picture about the center field position. Now that Siri is kind of uh, backed out a little bit, we, uh, we saw a kind of uh, My- Jake Myers and Chaz McCormick kind of come out of their shell a little bit. And Jake Myers, when he gets a hold of the ball, dude, it goes far. And I didn't see that. Let me pull it up on Statcast real quick. But that bit, that uh, home run today well, was. He has power and he has improved his bat in that category big time. He hit more home runs this year in triple A than he ever hit in any other level of minor league ball. And then he comes here, you know, has a big, um, his first week he hits like a home run and a grand slam in the same game. He's got power. I mean, he's, he's, he's got the chiseled jaw of a Greek God and the kid is stacked, dude. I'm just saying he's got muscles and he can hit the ball. You know, Chaz McCormick, too. He's got that great rollover swing. When he gets a hold of the ball, he barrels the ball and looks just like Jeff Bagwell doing it. I love it. Okay. Um, someone uh, said 401 yeah, was. It was 401 distance. distance. Uh, it was a expected uh, batting average of 940. I would hope so. <laughs> uh, the yeah. uh, launch angle was 33 degrees and the exit velocity was 107.8 miles per hour off the bat so that was the second hardest hit ball of the game uh the first hardest hit ball of the game was uh jordan alvarez's uh hit a uh, double in the ninth inning which is 109 miles per hour off the bat then alvarez's uh ground out in the 
uh, six inning was 107.8 miles per hour to the bat. And so the Astros were getting a lot of hard hits today. Some of them were out for outs. Some of them were for hits. So the Astros are getting the better contact. This is a second straight game of four home runs or more. I mean, four home runs in a, a game uh, after only hitting eight home runs in the previous, what, eight games or so. So this the Astros are coming out of their shell a little bit offensively. That's a good sign in the playoffs. But um, uh, if we had to pick who's the odd man out, uh, I think you're talking position players. I'm, I'm thinking that we're going to go with 18 position players. I'm joking. I just said that for Larry to, um, um, who would, who would, who would be the odd man out? He, he asked me earlier why 14 players, Eric. That's why I said that. Oh, uh, because in the ALDS, you don't need as many pitchers. So you, you typically right. go with the extra hitter, but in the ALCS, you need the extra pitchers because A, it's a longer series and you don't have the as many off days as you do in ALDS. I just, I think, I think the odd man out is going to be the guy that we've been talking about, uh, Siri. I just, I just think he's, I mean, if he's got if a he's fractured hurt, finger. Can't work. Yeah, I mean, why? Well, I mean, why are you gonna? Why are you gonna eat? Why are you gonna pinch run a guy with a with a broken finger or even a fractured finger? It's it's, it's just gonna get worse. So if he has a chance to heal and be on the ALCS roster, there's no way you chance. Marwin by default makes this roster because of Siri. If Siri's not injured, Marwin is left off. But I think the Astros put Marwin on maybe regardless because of the experience. Yeah, I mean, I still think there's a case for Garrett Stubbs to be an emergency catcher just in case. Um, just but he case. hasn't played hard still, any as lately. an emergency catcher. That does not mean he has to sniff the playing field. But how many emergency catchers do you need in a five game series? Well, I mean, you only need one. Yeah, we got two. What do you mean? We got Castro and Maldonado. Castro will play. When I say I emergency catcher, I mean somebody that you need in case um, Martin Maldonado, you pinch hit Jason Castro for Martin Maldonado, and then Jason Castro get hit, hurt, knock on wood, and you need an emergency catcher. That's what emergency catcher is. That's I why you I just don't. Catcher. I just don't think we we. I don't. Know. I don't. I don't. No, think Diaz, Diaz is on the roster. Diaz is. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah. Diaz is not. No. No. Diaz is in. Diaz is all. Okay. So. I mean, let's just let's just do this, okay? Let's do this for the. I have our old one up. I mean, okay, Altuve, Brantley, Alvarez, Correa, Guriel, Tucker, Diaz, McCormick, Myers, Maldonado. That's ten. Castro. That's eleven. Okay. Then Marwan Gonzalez. That's a that's twelve, right? Yeah. And then who is your thirteenth? I mean, we had this is what we had last time: Maldonado, Castro, Guriel, Altuve, Correa, Bregman, Diaz, Alvarez, Tucker, Myers, Brantley, McCormick, Siri, and the fifth, the fourteenth person was Margot or Stubbs. Okay, so well, we drop so, off Siri. Yeah, and, and then we go Margot or Stubbs, or bring up um, Taylor. I, Taylor Jones. I think it's. Yeah, and I don't. I, I just don't think you bring a guy up that's been down for. Well, they a did it last run. year with uh, with Chaz McCormick. Yeah, but that was just for his speed. Yeah. So, so, I mean, I don't know. You know what? We'll hey, we'll be talking about this this yeah, week. Yeah, we got more time to talk about it. Yeah, so. and um, we'll talk about it with Mike Stanton, who's actually like played and won a World Series, three of them. I might add. We'll talk to Ben Verlander, see what he thinks. Yeah. I know Eric. Eric has the direction he likes to go. I have the direction I like to go. And we want to hear from y'all. We want y'all to interact with us on Twitter. We want to thank y'all for making us your first listen. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I mean, we can go on and on with this conversation. But um, Carlos Correa, uh, after the game, said that um, basically that um, the fans, like I said yesterday, I love them. This is my second home. And they made me feel right at home. I'm forever grateful for everything and every moment we share together. And on his 26th home run of the season, I knew that was my last about of the year right there. I was trying to make something cool happen. Thank God I got a homer. It was a special running basis. I can tell you that. And uh, he said it was obviously a very emotional day. It was obviously meant a lot to me. Just the way the teammates treat me, 
and the way they take care of me and how much they uh, respect they have the the way they love me that how much uh, and have and they love and they i'm not a crier and uh, i felt like crying uh in that situation and so also he uh said that he was honored by the fans and teammates and basically when he he took the field and he was the only one that took the field that really really meant something for him and uh, dusty baker said he earned that and he deserved that he and the crowd are one they grew up together with carlos and carlos grew up with them carlos is a big part of this town and a huge part of their organization that was a perfect thoughts by dusty by the way i just didn't do the little sounder there but um <laughs> but basically uh the, it was a it was a perfect night for it with the whole thing and uh he just said it was an emotional day it was a two o'clock game i showed up early to ballpark soaking it in and uh they they told me to go out first i usually go out last and they were pushing me to go out first they wanted me to go out first for a reason i went out and they stayed behind and it obviously meant a lot to me just to uh, just the way the teammates treated me and take care of me so yeah uh, and and i mean all those all those things are are great but you know at the end of the day um, Carlos is going to go out and man up and I think he's going to have a great playoff season. And like I said, I just, I just, I'm not, I'm not all in on this. Carlos is definitely leaving right. somewhere. I just, I yeah. just can't buy into that right now. Um, but what I do love, well, okay. What I, what I don't love Eric, um, is I, I don't love the fact that it's the Yankees and the Red Sox. It's like, come on, can we get another matchup please? I mean, this like really the it's Yankees and the Red Sox. Yeah, and let's just let's just hope that the Yankees and Red Sox play like twenty seven innings of like one run ball or actually ten run ball, just wear their hitters out, and then they get to to Tampa. Um, I don't I don't care who it is or who's in our way. We just got to get them out of our way, you know. Yeah, uh, Carlos Gray also said that they celebrated uh, Guriel's batting title with some champagne. Now I hope they celebrate Carlos Gray's contract with some champagne as well. Yeah, that would be and, great. And one of the things, if you were in Spotify Green Room, you heard this, and it makes sense. Um, one of our one of our followers, followers, Larry the GM, said, "Wouldn't Monday and Tuesday be perfect time for for them to sign Carlos?" And I want to I want to talk to Ben Verlander about that more about what would be the possibilities from a player's perspective of them just getting that deal done, just doing it. Um, that would light the city on fire with enthusiasm. And I mean, I'm excited about this series, Eric. The reason yeah. why I'm excited is because we're starting in Houston, and this team, f- for the better part of the last part of this road trip, they hit, and they did show up for their last game. They showed some fight. They showed some fires. Last game, it didn't mean anything. And okay. I think with this team, the sky's the limit, right? All right. To end the show, I'm gonna go ahead and go all space balls and uh, play with my toys. Uh, so, um, we're going to go ahead and, uh, do this. So, Hey, um, did you hear what Dusty said? He said that Lance McCullers is probably going to start game one of ALCS, uh, ALDS. Oh no, I did not hear that. Did you hear that? Jose or Kitty also uh, said he felt really good tonight and he hopes that he, he starts one of those games. Oh, that sounds really cool. And, um, Oh, anyway, I don't know if y'all what? saw space balls, but uh, Dark Helmet always says, um, I, you did not see me playing my toys again. No, no, sir. I did not see you playing with your toys again. So anyway, but well, um, if you're listening, you didn't see that. So you, you um, have to watch a podcast and we're going to talk optimal starting rotations. What what we think is the best option and what we think the Astros are going to do versus what we think is best for the team as if we are making the call. We're going to do that this week. So check us out. Subscribe to our channel. If you're listening, go to YouTube, subscribe, and you get to work. Do it before you clock in. Trust me, the boss won't see it. All right. And, um, yeah, we actually talked about that. It wouldn't be amazing if they go ahead and sign – I'm not saying it's going to happen, but wouldn't it be amazing if they signed Carlos Correa before the ALDS? Wouldn't the yeah, crowd be a... That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah definitely. Do it, do it, do it, do it. 
And so uh, Brett's got to go uh, do the uh, the combined uh, thing with the White Sox. So we're going to go in this and we're going to have Ben Verlander on tomorrow night. So make sure you come check out that podcast and don't forget to check out the Locked on Bets podcast. And you can bet we'll be back to talk some more Astros versus White Sox because this is going to be lit and um, you won't see me playing my toys anymore. <laughs> So, all right, we'll be back tomorrow with another edition of the Lockdown Astros podcast. <laughs>